The unprecedented pace of disruption and uncertainty makes leadership more relevant today than ever before. It is not position or power, but your leadership skills that help you to think in unique, creative ways. When faced with a crisis, a leader is forced to think and make critical decisions. A leader who empowers a team and gives employees accountability increases the effectiveness of an organization. John Maxwell says leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. Warren Bennis says leadership is the capacity to turn vision into reality. And Bill Gates says, as we look ahead into the next century, leaders will be those who empower others. Today, I have the honor of welcoming Don, John Mahan. John Mahan, PMP, is a sought after instructor, international speaker, and award winning consultant. She has been instrumental across industries, working on projects, PMOs, and training professionals for over 20 years. Dawn became PMI certified in 2004. In 2009, she, led the Fortune, she left the Fortune 50 to found a first traditional project management consulting and training company. In 2014, she was recognized as professional of the year in consulting and project management by Strathmore's Who's Who Worldwide. She's a sought after international speaker at PMI chapters and corporations around the world. Dawn invented the project flow process learning system used in organizations such as Time Warner Cable, Cisco Systems, the PMI Southern New England chapter, and the American Chamber of Commerce in Indonesia. Project flow makes learning the project management institutes complex, gold standard, quick, easy, and fun. She's been a STEM spokesman in WHYY in Philadelphia, and her work in developing project skills in young professionals has been featured in Market Watch, Morningstar, Yahoo Finance, and more. Look for her upcoming book, Accomplish More, Stress Less, The Practical Guide to Driving Successful Projects. Welcome, Dawn. Thank you. I'd like to begin by asking you, what do you think are three traits that a project manager or a leader should have to thrive in a disruptive economy? Well, your quotes in the beginning were wonderful. You know, I, the first thing to say about leadership is that, you know, everybody has a different opinion of it. And uh, so I love that you gave three different quotes about it from three very different people. Um, what, what I teach about project management and leadership is that project management is an art and a science. And the science part is like we teach through project flow, you know, and we teach, you know, the PMI methods and the agile methods and the, you know, that part, um, that's the science, but the leadership part is the art part and you have to develop your own leadership style. So when I say leadership now in the new economy, I feel that more people are looking for authentic leaders and, um, and leaders who lift up other people. So when, when, you know, the word empower was used in one of your quotes, and I agree with that. In fact, my, um, one of my students at Pierce College wrote on her final exam when I asked the question, do you, do you believe you would make a good project manager? Is project management something you'd be interested in as a career? And, and I asked them to answer the question, yes or no, and just be thoughtful about the why. And uh, she answered it that she is now interested because she had originally thought that a project manager was just somebody who, you know, told people what to do. And that now she understands in the way that, you know, certainly I teach it and many others teach it, is that it's all about helping the team be successful. So that's the kind of leadership um, I believe is needed in the new economy. It's more about communication and compassion and lifting the team up. 
Nice points you have there. Being authentic, that empowering people, and communicating with people. So we come to handling a crisis. How do you think a leader responds in time of a crisis? And what are some of the steps he or she takes? Yeah, I think the most important part, you know, is really, again, about leadership, communication, and compassion. Because, you know, a lot of people don't know how to handle a crisis. And they look to someone to lead. Um, and so if there are many different ways to respond in a crisis, like a real, you know, a real crisis that has an immediate, that where there's an immediate moment. Uh, and there are fewer people who are capable naturally of being clear, you know, staying calm, appearing to be in control first of yourself and your own emotions. Um, because, you know, you see it in all the movies, right? The, the women scream and there's panic and they jump around and they run, people run, right? Anytime there's an explosion in a movie, most people, you know, scatter, freak out, right? Or whatever. Um, and then it's the, you know, the, the first responders, the police, the firefighters, whoever is being featured in the movie, the hero, you know, who, who you know has themselves under control first you know they're not freaking out they're not throwing their arms around they're not running away so that's the that's really the first thing and and the and the first thing your first impression in that case is is just like your first impression when you meet someone for the first time you know to and everyone is assessing does this person have themselves under control first and, and they're deciding if they're going to lead you know be led by this person so that's, that's the first thing, you know, uh, to stay calm and appear in control of yourself. And this, the next thing is really about quickly assessing the situation, making a plan in your mind. You know, you don't have time to like go in your office and go plan, you know, you have to quickly assess and plan and say, okay, you know, let's do this thing, which is about being decisive and doing the next right thing. Coming to a team, how does a uh, leader motivate and connect with the team? And what can you do to support them during such times? Well, you know, the, the world's going through crisis right now. America, you know, I sit here in America. Um, we're going through really three crises at once. You know, a pandemic, a political situation, and social injustice. Uh, and all of these things are overlapping and it's, it's a very hard time in America right now. Um, and so again, I would offer how you keep a team motivated and connected is through leadership, communication, and compassion, you know, and empowering them and trusting them that, you know, they're doing their jobs from home. You know, they are doing them in the best way that they can in this situation and everybody's reacting differently, you know, and, and so having some compassion about how, how everybody is reacting differently and that's okay. If you look back at your career, uh, what do you think is one big challenge you have faced as a project manager or as a leader? Yeah, I mean, every project has its challenges, you know, so it's hard to choose. Um, uh, I, I had some challenges um, in the beginning because, you know, I, I was female and I was the only female um, in many cases and I was young, you know, and so I was the only female, I was the only young person, you know, in the room many, many times. Um, so, you know, luckily at the time, I didn't know that that was a challenge, but, you know, I, I look back on it and I, and I think, Oh, wow. You know, and um, so I hope that, the, that in this new generation of people, um, now that there has been a lot of talk about, you know, women in STEM and minorities in STEM and, you know, cause I have a math degree and, uh, and you know, and I was in uh, information technology for a long time. So I was the only female a lot, you know? And uh, so I hope that all of this work has, 
has resulted in, in people not feeling that way or not realizing it, you know, at least <laughs> if it happens to happen to them. Um, so that's, you know, one thing. I mean, I can give you a specific example if you like, that was kind of strange. Yeah, that's uh, an interesting point you brought out because today uh, we need more women in STEM and we need uh, more uh, project managers so that there is a gender equality in the workplace, yes. You know, I have found um, something interesting and I know uh, one of the chapters uh, in Asia had a, had a conversation about this at, at one of the chapter meetings, which I, I've, which I was thinking about it at the same time. So it's amazing how connected we can be. Um, and that is, you know, that there, there are many women in project management and, and many of the women, and I, and I think that this happened to me, um, you know, a, a lot of the women get tapped if they are in technology to become project managers, which, which is fascinating. Exactly. Yeah, so that's wonderful. You know, I think that's, that's wonderful. I mean, it happened to me that way. Um, it, it was, I think it was more about my age than my gender at the time, but it may have been both. Uh, and, and I feel grateful, you know, to have been given that opportunity because I think many people don't, I mean, I didn't know what project management was when I was in college. I had never heard of it before, you know, and it, it happened accident. I call it, you know, we talk, we call it oftentimes the accidental project manager. I was an accidental project manager at first. I, had, I didn't try to become a project manager. I got you know, tapped on the shoulder and said, I need you to lead a project. They're like, what? <laughs> yeah. Today, we are moving from a localized setting to a virtual setting. We have so many tools, Zoom, like we are using now, Skype, mm -hmm. WhatsApp, and Slack. So how does a leader lead effectively in a virtual workplace? Yeah, you know, I have been fortunate enough to um, be outside of the normal sort of, you know, the Fortune 50, Fortune 500 for 10 years. So I've been leading virtual meetings for a long time. Um, so I find, you know, and, I, and nobody asked me this 10 years ago, right? You, you just, you figure it out. Um, so I find that, you know, it has to be very similar to how you lead an in-person meeting, you know, only with a few key twists. One is you, you just like in an in-person meeting, people are late coming in, you know, they're running from the last meeting or whatever, you know, I mean, people are probably going to be late coming into your virtual meeting too. So you have to bake that into the agenda. You know, somebody has a technology problem, they're coming from the last meeting, they haven't had a break all day, you know whatever it is. So it's, it's same thing happens in in-person meetings as virtual meetings there. Um, another thing that, you know, is a little harder though, is if, if people don't have their cameras on and you can't see their faces. Mm -hmm. So I really, you know, back when there were no cameras like this, you know, 10 years ago, really, I mean, nobody had this capability then, you know, you had to just listen to voices. So you had to ask, you had to call people out, Hey, you know, Bob, right, Jane, you know, I ha we haven't heard from you yet. I just want to check in, you know, what do you, th what do you think? Is there anything that we're missing or how do you feel about the approach we're taking? I just want to make sure that, you know, I hear from you and get your, your thoughts. So you, you can, you know, if people aren't turning their cameras on and there are a lot of people that are resisting this, uh, I was one of those people resisting the cameras. I don't like to see myself on camera. Um, you know, you have to call people out a little bit more. And when you're in a room, you can see them and you can sense if they have something to say or they're irritated or whatever, and you can, you know, try to sense it. But, uh, you know, now you, you, have, you have to be more intentional about engaging people. Many companies worldwide were actually taken aback when this COVID-19 pandemic struck at the beginning of this year. So how does one preempt such a risk and factor it into your project management risk plans? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think from now on, you know, people are going to want to put the pan a pandemic like on their risk plans, even when we get back to normal and it'll be like, you know, 
the zombie apocalypse item, um, only it's real. Um, so, you know, I think most people, most executives won't allow for that. You know, just like we saw that, I mean, I've seen this before, right? We, and you have too, we've seen the bird flu. That was a big thing. You know, that same thing happened. I mean, it was the same thing, right? Essentially that did what it did to projects, the same thing. So we've seen this movie before um, in projects and I, I think most executives will just say, yeah, I know it could happen again, but what we have to do is, you know, we have to move on and then we just have to adjust if it happens. And so then on your risk plan, you identify the risk and you say the decision was made by, you know, officer so-and-so and, -so and it, we'll deal with it if it happens. That's all you can do. Yeah. I mean, uh, there are places where you have, I think, a lot of uh, earthquakes and cyclones and tsunamis. And um, uh, some companies are better prepared, I would say. They have business continuity plans and disaster recovery plans. But some are, like, uh, surprised. I mean, they don't right. prepare for these things. Yeah, that's, that's how they are. you're surprised. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean, to the extent that operations can can do a project to say, you know, if we come back in the office, uh, let's make sure that this is added to our disaster recovery plans, you know, that the disaster is everybody has to work from home again, you know, um, what, what, how to make that easier, faster, cheaper, smoother. Definitely that's, but that to me, that's a project, you know, to say, let's, let's decide, you know, let's make the decision now, you know, if this were to happen again, what will we do, make that plan, let everybody know so that everybody knows there is a plan, you know, and then declare victory at the end of that process to say, you know, we, we decided, we've communicated it, we put it on the shelf, you know, everybody understands what the plan is, done, declaring victory, right, you know, and then you just wait, and if it happens again, and God forbid, I hope not, it never happens again, but, you know, for another hundred years, and, um, you know, but people will feel better. If, if there is a plan, yeah. What do you see as a future for project managers in the coming the, year? The future for project managers? You know, I, I just did a little talk on this. Um, I think project managers need to become distinct or become extinct. And this is, um, this isn't just being dramatic because there well, I've seen it over the past 20 years, you know, the, the rule I call it in my upcoming book, I call it the project manager's golden rule. And what it is, is it's, you know, many people have heard the golden rule, but in, pro, in pro, I call it project land in project land. The golden rule is if you're the project manager and the team did something great, you step back and you say, it was the team. Great job team. But if something happened, you know, that wasn't so great, you step up and you say, it was me. And you protect the team. So I think that, you know, we talked about this in the very beginning about empowering the team and, you know, serving the team and making sure that we are um, doing right by them. But, you know, if, if project managers don't become distinct at their role in leadership and leading and the value that they bring and, you know, the trust of the team to take care of them through the project, no matter what happens, you know, that they trust you, um, you know, then executives will say, well, we don't need you anymore. The team can do it on their own, you know, that we don't, you're, if you're not being helpful and you're not, delivering value, why do we need you? Yeah. So I think, I think um, developing your own leadership style, you know, and building that trust, being compassionate, um, you know, all of those things come to bear to help you be distinct. Because it's your own, as you're more authentic, you are your own leader, your own style, you have your own brand of leadership. If you're just yourself, nobody else can do you like you can do you, right? So I think that's part of becoming distinct is finding your authentic 
self and being that in the best way that you can. Yeah, transparency and trust, I think, goes a long way in building confidence of the team. They are more comfortable and I think you'll produce much better results. I agree wholeheartedly, yes. We come to the final question. Do you have any words of advice for youngsters, the millennials who wish to take up a career in the project management or leadership? Yes, and for anyone, you know, for anyone who wants to, who thinks they want to switch careers or, um, you know, try their hand at, at project management, I, the number one thing is to know yourself and to figure out if you're built for it or not, is it's not an easy job. The, the people who make it look easy are like the Olympians that make swimming look easy or snow skiing look easy. You know, they, they, I watch the, I watch the Olympics and I'm like, it all looks easy, you know, when you watch them do it, right? But I couldn't do, you know, most of these things. So I, I, when you see a project manager and they make it look easy, beware. <laughs> it is not easy. You know, the, the great project managers are like the Wizard of Oz behind the curtain pulling all the, you know, strings and making everything work smoothly for everybody. So, um, so I, I think you have to know if you're built for it. We have actually a course because of this question um, that you're asking, and it's called, what does it take to be a great project manager, where I reveal the secret to what it takes. And we reveal some of these DNA things that you need and, um, and so forth. So, but the number one thing you know, that, we, that we talk about is leadership. And the L in leadership is, do you like people and do people like you? Because if you don't like people, this is not a good job for you, you know? And if people don't like you or like working with you, it's not a good job for you either, you know? So there are a bunch of things like that where you really have to know yourself. As a young person, you may not know yourself yet, you know, enough. But I think all experience is good when you're young. All of it. Every, get every experience you can, you know? All of it. Because even if you don't like it, great, that's a win. Then you learn what you don't like, what doesn't work for you. It's wonderful, it's a good experience and you can take the next, take the next uh, step on your path, yeah. John, uh, thank you for sharing those valuable insights on those questions which I posed to you. Uh, it was a pleasure listening to you and I'm sure those listening to this uh, video will benefit from it. Thank you thank so much. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it, it was a pleasure, thank you.